I just got back from a tiny whoop race and that means I have got a big problem. You see, I've got all these batteries and some of them are fully charged and some of them are fully discharged, but none of them are at storage voltage. And that's bad because the longer a battery sits not at storage voltage, the more damage it takes over time. So I guess I better just put these batteries back at storage voltage by uh, plugging them into this charge. No, none of the 1S chargers have a storage function. And that means that our tiny watt batteries wear out fast. They already don't last very long. And then we leave them fully charged and fully discharged and they don't last even shorter longer. -er. And that freaking hurts because these new Bidro Nitro Nectar Gold batteries, if you buy them one, one at a time, they're like $7 a piece. And if you buy a pack of 20, they're only like $5 a piece. That means I need to protect them. I need to put them at storage voltage. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Here's the device that we're looking at today. This is the Flying Sandal. That's the guy who makes it. It is the Flying Sandal. You see, I want to call it a parallel board. And in fact, on the product page for this device, they call it a parallel board because they don't think you will understand what it actually is. But it's actually not a parallel board, and that's a good thing. You see, when you plug batteries in parallel, if they are not at very close to the same voltage, they exchange voltage with each other, they exchange current with each other, and that can be a problem. Now that's more a problem with very big batteries, but it can be a problem with smaller batteries. But more fundamentally, when you plug batteries in parallel, they their voltage stays the same. You just get one big one cell battery. And when you plug batteries in parallel, if one of them was to die, it kills all of the other ones on the parallel charge board. And to me, that is the number one reason why I don't like parallel charging tiny whoop batteries. I don't mind parallel charging larger batteries because I feel like I have a grasp on when they are healthy and when they're not. But tiny whoop batteries are always kind of right on the edge of dying. And so if I plug 10 of them into a parallel board and one of them takes a dump and then it kills all the other ones, that's gonna be a really bad day for me. The flying sandal board is actually a series board. So what that means is that when we plug the batteries in here, number one, they do not have to be at any particular voltage. We don't need to check to see if they're at the same voltage before we plug them in. We can just arbitrarily plug them in. Uh, and what it does is it turns them basically into a four cell battery. So here we have a 4S 300 milliamp hour pack. And what that lets us do is plug it in to our standard charger and then we just run a storage cycle just like normal. See, 4S. Here, oh, see we got one of these batteries that's fully charged. Cell number two is fully charged. Doesn't really matter. The charger will figure it out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a storage function we're gonna put it, let's take them down to 3.8 volts, 3.81, whatever. And we're going to two amps, two amps onto a 300 milliamp hour pack is a little bit much. What we do is we just take the size of the cell, in this case, 300 milliamp hours, and we convert that to amps. So that's 0 0.3 amps, and that's gonna be a safe charge rate for these little packs. You could go a little higher than that to maybe, maybe double that if you were in a hurry, but we're just gonna be safe. 300 milliamp hours, 0 0.3 amps, and start task. And now, what do you mean battery type wrong? Oh, it can tell this is a high volt because it's over 4.2 volts. No problem. We'll change it to high volt. We're gonna take them down to 3.80 and start disk. And now it is just gonna run. The charger is gonna do the work. It's gonna take this cell down. It's gonna take these cells down to 3.8 volts. It's just gonna figure it out. And at the end of the cycle, it will just be at 3.8 volts on all four of them. And by the way, you could charge batteries this way too. If you prefer to charge on a large charger like this, 
it'll do the same as if you have a 4S battery that is out of balance. If one of these is charged up and one of these is not, it's just an out of balance 4S pack and it'll charge them up and balance them. And that may be faster or slower depending on your charger's uh, capabilities, but you could charge, you could discharge, and most importantly, you can storage charge using this series board. And that is pretty powerful because putting your batteries at storage will make them last longer. In fact, I've got another video I made talking about how long you can leave your batteries fully charged before you put them at storage voltage. And I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you want to check that out. Or I'll put it in the end card at the end of the video, too, if you just want to keep watching. Now, there is a gotcha with parallel charging versus series charging, which is what we're doing here. And that is when you parallel charge, all of the batteries need to be very close to the same voltage, but they can be a different size, a different milliamp hours. You can mix a 1300 and a 1500 and a 1800 milliamp hour pack when parallel charging. When you are doing series charging, the batteries can be different voltages, but they need to be very close to the same size. We have here a bunch of 300 milliamp hour packs, but I would want to be careful and I probably wouldn't want to mix like if I had a 450 milliamp hour pack or something like that. I would want to keep them all with the same milliamp hours and that is a limitation of series, but I think it's a limitation that many people are going to be willing to live with because I'm going to bet that most or all of your tiny whoop packs are basically the same size. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here with another uh, little tip that uh, might get trip some of you guys up. And that is that, so I've just finished this one. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug these batteries and plug the next ones in. When you plug the batteries in, you need to plug them in in the correct order, otherwise the charger will freak out. So if I plug in what's labeled as cell one here, it's gonna freak out because it will see a uh, one, the voltage won't be where it expects it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in from cell 4 from left to right and you'll see that when I do that I'll get cell 1, cell 2, and see based on that the voltage that it's seeing here the sum voltage of all the cells and the voltage it's all going to add up correctly and it's not going to get super confused. But I still don't think it's going to work because I think you have to have all of the series connections plugged in for it to work. Yeah, you see, I don't know. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it treats this like a two cell. No, it does not. It's not happy, see? Because it, it sees that there's missing cells here. So I'm just going to take two extra batteries already at storage voltage and just have them there kind of as a placeholder. But you've got to have the whole series board filled up for it to actually be able to do anything. There we go. Now it's going to be happy. Yeah, so now it's just going to bring these remaining two batteries to storage. And we've got these two batteries just sitting here. They were already at storage. It doesn't really matter. But they do have to actually be plugged in. All of the sets on a series board have to be occupied. Uh, and that's another difference between series and parallel. That's going to do it for this video. I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to pick up the flying sandal board or if you want to pick up, it's not the only series adapter out there. I'll put a link to several of them in there. I think it's an essential thing to have in your toolkit. Um, not so much for charging, because for charging, I'll just grab any little 1S charger and just pl pl plug them in as I'm flying, and I'll just run. It's great to be able to run this off of just a little USB power bank. I took this to the race with me, and I barely, like it barely took even a quarter of the charge on this thing. So that's an easy way to keep them charged up while you're flying. But when you are done flying and you want to put them back at storage voltage, and I highly recommend that you do for maximum life, this type of thing is the way to go. Links in the video description are affiliate links, and that means that when you click that link and make a purchase at the affiliated store, I get a small commission. You don't have to buy this item. You can buy that item. You can click those links before you do any of your shopping, and it's an easy way for you to support the channel and say thanks for the work that I'm doing here. It doesn't cost you anything. Just click the link, do your shopping, check out. I get a little commission. It's a very nice thing to do. Um, what do you think? Have you been... Uh, this is like the hidden secret of Tiny Whoops, because like... The people who know, know, but I don't know why more people don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't make a video about it until now. Or put it on my website.
Happy flying. <laughs> What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.